Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today we're taking a close look at Critical Role Wild Mount Miniatures. Back in June 2021, WizKids released multiple box sets of minis based around Critical Role's setting of Wild Mount. Similar to the Curse of Strahd minis, these weren't randomized boxes, but rather visible collections. Uh, there are six individual sets divided into two buckets, monsters or factions. Monsters of Wild Mount 1 and 2 and the Udak Premium, and then Factions of Wild Mount has Dwendalian Empire, Kryn Dynasty and Zorhas, and Clovis Concord and Menagerie Coast. Julie and I recently did a live unboxing stream. Check it out here or see the link in the description if you haven't watched it. All of these minis are numbered into one series, so we'll operate as if this is one individual set of minis. One last note, I know very little about Critical Role, so I apologize if I get anything wrong. Stick around until the end of the video for the final rating. I've included timestamps so you can jump around. All right, quick reminder for the rating system. Each mini is rated on a five point scale in three different metrics, sculpt, paint, and fun. One is terrible, two is disappointing, three is what I'd expect from WizKids, four is impressive, and five is fantastic. All of these are looked at for mass produced pre-painted minis. These points then translate into individual star ratings. All right, let's go. Kicking off Monsters of Wild Mount, one is the Core Spawn Crawler. I thought the sculpt was cool, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's like creepy little gross thing, uh, but ultimately the paint job kind of suffers. I really enjoyed the sculpt of the Core Spawn Emissary. I thought this was a lot of fun too. Uh, it's a big disgusting bug thing that I would absolutely hate to ever run into in real life, but the paint job again was a little simple, but okay. The Core Spawn Seer is definitely my favorite of this set from the Core Spawn minis. Uh, the sculpt is fantastic. It's hardy size too. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun. I really appreciate the sculpt on the husk zombie. Uh, a lot of zombies are pretty basic shuffling around. This thing is uh, definitely gives you a different vibe of a zombie, kind of more aggressive. I also love the giant hands. I really need to learn the lore of the shadow ghast because it sounds like it's going to be amazing. Uh, I just wish the paint job was better. I mean, you've got two colors really, and then the tongue and the shadow. The Aeorian Absorber is interesting. It's got this giant eyeball, uh, but the pose is really basic. I mean, it's fun because of the eyeball, but the paint job isn't anything worthwhile and it's okay. I love, love, love the Aeorian Nullifier. This one is the opposite of the last one. This is so fun. Uh, all these terrifying mouths everywhere. It's, I don't know what it does. I can't even imagine, but it's super well made. I'm really conflicted on the Aeorian Reverser. It's name's appropriate. Uh, I like a lot of the sculpt, but the pose is boring. I like the back paint job, but the tummy paint job is terrible. And I think it's fun, but it also looks like a watermelon thing. The last of the Wild Mount 1 minis, the Nurgalid. This is fantastic. This is perfect. This is everything a mini should be. It's super detailed, well painted, super fun, and just gross and weird. And this might be one of my favorite minis ever. Moving into Monsters of Wild Mount 2, the Sawagan Warlock of Ukutoa is really great. Uh, the sculpt is fantastic. I know the artwork it's based on. It's really good. Uh, it's a ton of fun, and the paint is good. This is a great one. The Sea Fury definitely leaves something to be desired. It's uh, The paint job is super basic. It's just a lady standing there. I mean, there's good detail, but there's nothing here. The Gear Keeper construct is a giant robot basketball of doom or something. <laughs> the sculpt is super great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the paint job is good, but it's really, really simple. The Gloomstalker suffers from, I think, a problem we see over and over here. The sculpt is great, it's a lot of fun, but the paint job is super basic. You've got a purple with a very, very light dry brushing and then the black plastic and that's that's it. Marrow Shallow Priest is fantastic. It's lively, it's got a cool rope, it's paint job is excellent, it's a ton of fun. This is, this is a really standout mini here, this is great. I do need to fix his bent spear though. The more bounder suffers the same problems again. Our sculpt here is totally average, middle of the road, uh, overall fun. It's the same thing. It's it's nothing fancy. Uh, but the paint, we have our Arviatris problem here. This is purple plastic. Suavein Basilisk, the sculpt is really neat. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but I have never seen a mini so completely destroyed by its paint job. 
The colors are fun, but it is so, so thick. It completely obliterates all the detail. There isn't a labeled number 17 in the set, so I'm going to guess that's the Udak. He's fantastic. The sculpt is great. The paint job's great. It's so much fun. It's nice to have a giant mini that isn't a dragon. This is a real win. Bringing us into the Dwendalian Empire is the Volstrucker Agent, and this is the perfect example of what a middle-of-the-road average WizKids mini looks like. The pose is fine, the paint job is fine, and it's kind of fun. The Drakenblood Dragonborn is interesting, uh, lore-wise I think it's really neat, uh, but the actual mini itself is totally middle-of-the-road. And again, it's not bad to be middle-of-the-road, it's just what it is. And here's how you can slightly improve it. The Ravenite Dragonborn, the sculpt is just better. The details are sharper. The pose is a little bit better, I think. Uh, but really, those details are the difference here. The Dwendalian Aristocrat managed to escape the perfect three score uh, with his fun colors. I will say, though, that I hate that the top of his boots is the same color as his cloak. It makes him look like a weird Santa. I really love the Dwendalian Farmer. I know the score isn't super duper high here, but it's a lot of fun with the uh, just the, the shape of her and her weapon, which is an axe for chopping wood, I guess. And it's just, I like this one. Dwendalian Crowns Guard. This is another completely middle of the road mini. I do like how she's got the, the sword just about to come out to scare you, but she isn't coming at you to murder you. So it's fun, but it's plain. And the Righteous Brand Soldier is another completely average mini. Uh, the sculpt on the knuckles on the gloves the gauntlets that's actually my favorite part and the cloak's well done too the hills of pride's call farmer has a super long name uh but the paint job lets it down uh it's really just red 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 but the green from the leaves of the plant bleed into his arm and pumat soul finishes our dwindalian empire box uh it's a pretty mediocre mini actually but the fun brings us up a little bit with that book and the nose and it's just a it's nice to see a fur bulk. I wanted to love the Lotus Den halfling the first mini here in the Kryn Dynasty and Zorhas box but the paint job lets it down too much. Uh, the staff kind of looks like a snake which is uh, interesting but it's okay. Dark Elf Rogue at first I thought I was going to love this paint job but it is sloppy blotchy and just all over the place but I like the sculpt with the cloak and the two back daggers. Echo Knight is really interesting. I think this is a really fun mini. Uh, the sculpt is excellent. The paint job could be better, but it's nothing terrible. But what really shines with it is when you use it in conjunction with the next mini, the Echo Mini. Uh, it's like the reverse, because that's a class ability. It can create a shadow. And so this is the reverse sculpt of it. And it's, it's transparent. You can see through it a little bit. These are both really cool. I really enjoyed the uh, Trader of Kryn. I thought the sculpt was good, and it's unusual to have such a beefy kind of person but the fun of it overall was so interesting i'm assuming this is an orc the crin noble the paint job is so so basic but the sculpt is really well done i love all the different flowing layers i think uh this is one of the more elegant minis all right the graviturgy wizard might actually be my favorite mini in this whole set the sculpt is so dynamic it's flowing and action oriented. The paint job is really, really good. And it's just such a fun mini. The Chronergy Wizard is good and it is kind of fun with the, with the spell effect. But sometimes these small gnomes are just let down by their size because there's not too much you can squeeze into it. Dunamancy Wizard. This is also fantastic. Flowing robes. The paint job is surprisingly as simple as it is. It's very well done. And it's just a lot of fun to have this cool drow. I don't know what's going on with the hollow one, but it brings us into the Clovis Concord and Menagerie Coast set. Uh, the sculpt is good. I think that, I don't know if the sword's supposed to be broken like that, but I don't know. A fisherman of Clovis is okay. I wanted to love it more than I actually do. The idea of somebody walking around with a bunch of fish, I think is fun, but it it's a pretty basic mini. I like the Clovis Noble. I think it's kind of basic. I like the colors, but the paint job isn't super great. I wish the pose is a little more dynamic. It's it's okay. Clovis Concord Zalazo brings a flesh-colored dragonborn, which I think is a little weird. Uh, and it's a little sloppy there, but the armor itself is really well done. So I like this one. 
This Shore Warden Soldier, I love. I wanted to give this all five stars, but the some of the paint with the little uh, highlighty rope kind of details is just, I just couldn't give it fives, but this is great. However, the Grinner is a fantastic. I don't know what the heck this half orc maybe bard is, but it's, it's awesome. I love it. And I wish we had more silly minis like this. The Blood Hunter has a really, really great sculpt. And it's kind of fun with the rawr face and the sword. Uh, I just wish the paint job was a little bit cleaner. I do really appreciate the potions there, though. And the Pallid Elf is pretty great, too. She's clearly like a, like a back alley rogue kind of person, but isn't too like sultry posed or anything. So I'm really impressed. Yeah, so these are fantastic minis. I'm very impressed with the diversity and variety of this entire line. Our star distribution is very positive with zero one star minis. Uh, that both sculpt and fun achieved a 4.0 average rating is a massively good showing for the set. Our average star ranking is interesting. Looking at all of the minis, 3.47 is good. It's certainly above the 3.0 average I'd expect from WizKids. But looking at individual sets, we've got significant disparity. The 5.0 is from the Udak box, which is just a single mini, so I wouldn't count that like that the same. Uh, so it looks like Monsters 1 and Kryn Dynasty and Zorhas are the standout boxes with the Dwendalian Empire ending up kind of as the run to the litter. As always, thank you to my patrons, the Spud Club. Your support makes it possible for me to afford these minis to review. I'd also like to do a special shout out to Daily for becoming the very first YouTube member of the Fry Minis Tots. I hope to see you all over on Discord. Links in the description for everything. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.